Friday 2020 mock paper. Um, question four. Okay. The sketch shows a row of terrace cottages built in the vernacular tradition. The owners of one of the cottages have decided to refurbish it and tend to self-build with the help of professional design and supervision. Discuss two advantages and two disadvantages self-build as a method of refurbishment. Okay. <laughs> advantages. Uh, obviously, the first one is reduce costs. Costs. Uh, how? Because you're doing the work yourself. Well, getting help off people, um, getting people cheaper, neighbours, so on and so forth. Um, if you're doing it as self build and you're taking your time, uh, advise needs to, so it'll avoid the need to. You won't need to get massive loans, so you don't need to pay someone to start, so avoid the massive loan. Loan, because you can do it over stages. Um, Enhance control over the building quality and finish. So my uh, my perspective on it is, if I'm paying someone to do it or someone's coming in doing it, and you know they can kind of skip over little things. Go oh, yeah, that's grand. Whereas if you're doing it yourself, you know you know exactly how it's finished. You've a hell of a lot of control. So you're not going to skip over parts or whatever. You know when you've it done, it's done properly. Um. It can be built over a longer period, so if it's kind of a, a refurbished job, especially, um, uh, you can just add it, you can tip away at it whenever it suits you, so you're never under pressure to try and get it done. Um, and you can learn skills and it can be fun. Obviously then, disadvantages. So, possible lack of skills. Requires a lot of time. A lot of personal time. Um, it's going to take a lot longer. Um, friends and family might say they help, but then they end up they won't help, or they won't help as much as they said they will, or they have, they're not as good as they possibly said they were, and um, loads of issues there. Um, if you're buying materials in small quantities, um, it's hard to get discounts. If you're going in to buy a bag of skim coat, um, it's around 30 quid, but if you were going in buying a bulk bag of skim coat, you would get it for 25 quid a bag, um, and things like that. And then you're responsible for all the standards, so your responsibility. And it falls on the owner. Okay, so there's pros and cons. It really depends on your skill level and uh, your desire to go doing it. Um, if you're anyway handy with your hands and you have an interest in it, it's manageable away, but if you don't really have much interest and you're only kind of half hours and attempt at it, you're um, it's probably better off to get someone in to do it. Um, okay, so the two of them there, and there's lots of other ones there as well. We're just running down through a bunch of adventures there. Uh, avoids needs to acquire large more enhance control or build quality. Yeah, personal satisfaction, enhance well being from physical and creative involvement in the project can be built over a long period. Building skills, capacity with with self and friends, um, built in conjunction with friends as a gift or an exchange of labor basis. Disadvantages then uh, building control management required, compliance may be challenging, longer construction, demand on personal time, lack of building guarantee scheme, no contractual with agreements with friends. 
All the responsibility for maintaining quality standards falls on the self-builders. Um, extra statutory responsibilities on self-builders, health and safety provision, etc, etc. Okay. Now, part B of that question. So part A of that question was quite short. So part B now, obviously, there's only two parts of it. So part B is going to be a hell of a lot longer. Okay, so a survey of the cottage reveals the following. Soft wood sliding sash windows with single glazing. Uninsulated traditional cut roof with natural slates. External radon random, sorry, external random rubble walls with an internal and external lime render. Select any two areas of the above and using notes and sketches describe in detail the steps involved in upgrading each of the selected area in a manner that respects the appearance and character of the original cottage okay so one big thing with renovating a lot of these things is we need to retain everything we need to try and keep it looking the exact same as everything okay um so we're going to run down through here and we'll go down through all of them here so softwood sliding Sash windows. Okay, so what are we going to do to um, retain them? So, retain the original slide and sash, softwood, single glazed windows, maintains the character, and increases the value of its 100 year old dwelling. The repair of such historic sash windows is therefore recommended an option rather than replacement. Okay, so anywhere we can, we repair rather than replace. Um, the repair of these sash windows are expensive, however grants are sometimes available from local authorities and the heritage council should the dwelling be um, included on the list of protected structures. The sliding sash windows should be carefully removed, taking care not to break the original float, glass or the timber sashes and frames. Retain the sash, counterbalancing weights, etc. A specialised conservation joiner should be tasked with the repair work. Okay, so there's actual people who or there's courses there you can do in repair and sliding sash windows and it's very expensive. Carefully remove glazing and note record its original position in the sash window. Caution required when this task with this task as in removing the hardened linseed oil putty. The original historic glass may get broken. When framed up a hundred years ago, animal glue would have been used. This glue is thermoplastic and on reheating the giants it will become possible to dismantle if necessary all the components and bolts the sashes add the frame remove all rotten timbers and replace with the same species i.e probably a red deal um, identical identical profiles for all components must be replicated where required um, traditional giant details should also be utilized as this also helps retain historic craft skills and develop an appreciation for such historic carpentry general work when gluing up the repaired sashes and frames, animal glue should be again used as this enables maximum retention of the original fabric and also allows for repair and conservation work in the future. So um, in another 100 years time if they're going to replace these, they'll go, they were built the same way so everything is always the same. Whereas if you put in a different glue there then, it'd be, um, you'd be throwing it off, the, you'd be throwing it off so you wouldn't um, actually get it. How am I trying to say here? You'd be when the person got to repair in hundred years' time, they wouldn't know whether it was animal glue or like it was originally used, or whether it was some different glue, and they might go and try and uh, heat the animal glue, thinking it was that, but in fact it isn't, and end up damaging everything. Um, so pulley should be removed and cleaned, freed up. Sashes, sash cards will need to be replaced, and the original sash counter balance weights reused. In the reassembly of sashes and glazing, linseed oil putty should be used. Original float gas is no longer from manufacturing in Ireland, where it is available and should be sourced elsewhere. Non toxic paints are preferred option in the repairing of the windows. Uh, record the date of conservation repair work should, including the name of the individuals who carried out the work to the sash window, should be made and placed perhaps on the inside of the sash ramps in the voids of the house uh, to counter the balance with. Pencil is best used for this practice. Secondary glazing is also recommended for this dwelling as it significantly res restricts heat loss and provides excellent soundproof and if triple glazing and having U value of at least 0 0.8 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Secondary glazing should be designed to be invisible from the outside and therefore not detract from the period um, dwellings of the characters. Okay so it's looking here for uh, 
screen details, that's as well in upgrading it. So using notes and sketches, so that's the key there, because a lot of this can be just writing, but using notes and sketches. Now, how do you sketch? Well, you sketch out your window, you know, your slide and sash window. Um, that's probably the best thing. So a slide and sash window you would have seen before, it's just one kind of overlapping the other one. Inside there. Same up here. Okay. Um, so, as I said, the sketch is fairly, there's not much you can sketch on your sketch your side window and then just make your points. So, um, I've ran down through all the points there. I'm just going to put them in bullet point here and you can um, expand on them as you go. So, retain all um, elements um, as best as possible. Any um, any rotten or broken parts, should be replaced with identical, the identical um parts made with the same material all cards weights pulleys should be reused uh, same traditional methods should be used to reconstruct the window okay and then the same your same glue everything required <coughs> okay First one done. Therapy here then is an uninsulated traditional cut roof. Okay, so so divide the skips here. So, what's the first thing we need to do? Well, we need to remove the slate. Carefully. 
Okay. Clean all the slates on the underside of the lime parging. No felt used at the time of construction 100 years ago. Weigh each slate following removal of lime parging. Record weight on underside of slate and stack in bundles. Okay. Do not power wash or clean the top surfaces of the natural slate as this will eliminate the patinian, patina that these hundred year old slates have required and has maintained the character of this period dwelling. When refitting the slates, place the heaviest slates at the eaves and working up the roof, lay each slate according to its decreasing weight. The lighted slates will be located at the ridge level. Remove the existing battens and examine the roof joists for signs of decay and remove decay ends of rafters, wall plate, fascia and replace if necessary with the same species of wood and same profiles moulding so as to maintain the historic integrity of the original roof. Trades persons such as carpenters should be should use the same carpentry jointing details during the repairs where possible, as this helps retain older traditional skills and techniques. Treat all new replacement timbers with a preservative. Um, install a vapor diffused breeder membrane to allow any vapor escape. Counter battens for ventilation should be used, provided the single story plane for the terrace um, is maintained. Replace slate on the principal elevation, keeping the same lap. Broken slates should be replaced firstly with slates taken from the rear and secondly using reclaimed or salvaged natural slate on the lesser visible roofs. Rainwater goods, gutters and downpipes should be have a period should be of the period cast iron. The principal elevation should utilize salvage or new cast iron rainwater goods again to help maintain the character of the dwelling. Insulate roof, all insulation material is to be hydroscopic to allow water vapor pass through. Insulation should to such as sheep's wool laid between the rafters, wood fibre board sh above and beneath rafters, lime plaster to fibre board beneath uh, rafters allow moisture through. All roof structures must be thoroughly vented, otherwise condensation will cause the decay of roof rafters. Full fin insulation can be achieved if insulation is permeable and breathable membrane with counter battens are installed. Okay, so remove all the slates carefully, um, weigh them and stack them. Sorry, weigh them, clean them, and stack them. Okay. Um, remove the timber battens. And check rafters for DK. Okay, um, in the case that rafters need to be re replaced, or rafters need to be, rafters need to be to, um, fixed, most of the original should be kept, okay, so if this is my rafter coming down the roof here say, I'm just going to give an example of a rafter here, it's caught in the base here, okay, um, what I want to do is I'm going to cut off the decay bit here, and replace with a new piece. Okay, and then what we do is we put another batten down along here either side to support it. New piece fitted, um, and this joins the two. Okay, um... What we want to do is we want to put our so we want to use it, uh, traditional methods as much as possible. Um, 
we then go back and insulate the roof with sheep's wool or natural material that would have been used back then. Sheep's wool and include all our, our vapor there. Um, it has, um, replace all our slates. Um, any broken slates. that need to be replaced should be fitted to the back rear of the house um, to maintain the visual effects in the front. Like that. Okay. As I said, that's just roughly sample down on there. So there's not much you can sketch really. Um, I need a joist there and maybe um, replacing the gutters or that. Um, but other than that, that's kind of that one done. Okay, and the last one then is the external random rubble walls with an internal and external lime render. Okay, so what do we do here? A breathable structure is preferred which allows the gradual movement of moisture from the inside through the building fabric of the walls. Allows moisture exchange readily between the interior, in, indoor and outdoor environment. Moisture is not trapped within the wall structure. Breathable wall prevents surface and interstitial condensation occurring as water vapor is not trapped but is gradually released. Ideally maintain the wall as a breathable structure. Few barriers, few barriers as in original. Insulation materials have to be carefully selected. Natural insulation materials allow breathability such as lime. Hemp, cork, wood fibre or cheap wool, cotton, flax, earth based mortars, renders, plasters, and lime marshes. Natural insulation materials are made from renewable or recyclable natural products. They allow the building to breathe and have excellent hydroscopic properties. Hydroscopic means it allows water to pass through it. Hydroscopic materials absorb moisture from the air when the humidity is high and release it in the, when the air is dry. Hydroscopic properties of the insulation will allow water vapor to move through the structure. Adding vapor to barriers and materials that are highly resistant to passage of water are generally not appropriate for older stone buildings. Rule of thumb, all layers should become progressively more permeable, permeable from the interior to the exterior. Tanking may be required to prevent rising damp depends on the design of the original wall. So tanking is basically like it's a paint, it's a rubbery paint that goes like a rubbery seal and it prevents water um, passing, coming up from the ground and passing into the inside. Okay, so how do we upgrade the capacity? Um, well, a lot of what we're trying to go on to do is end up kind of dry lining these kind of materials. Um, so if we were looking at a sketch here, a cross section of our wall here, what we currently have is a rubble wall here like this. Okay. 
Um, so we want to, we need to insulate that obviously. Um, so we're going to put timber battens inside and the inside of our wall here. I'm going to fix our plasterboard, our insulation inside in that. Okay, so we have our plasterboard run down here. And we've got an insulated um, section inside here, our plasterboard on the outside of here. Um, it's quilted, so it's going to be something like sheep's wool. Um, or something like that. Okay, um, so we're going to keep, what are we going to do? So we want a breathable structure. Um, which allows the gradual Movement of water from the inside to the outside. Um, natural insulation material. Um, keeps helps keep is breathable, so it's uh, hydroscopic. Hydroscopic. Um, All layers should become more per more permeable from the interior to the yeah, exterior and tanking may be required to prevent rising damp. Okay. So add in a note here on your any sketches you have. So rubber wall. You got your battens. So level M fifty by fifty battens. Level your passport, level your insulation, and level your passport. All right. And that's that one done. As I said, the kind of part B of this question is more long and it requires more detail there. Now, I've I've went down through or read down through all the information. Um. So I've just given brief outpoints, brief descriptions inside and out there. You'd want to be listening as much as you possibly could explain the whole thing.